Lee and Lee has not one, not two, but three different configurations of their new HydraShift AIO. But that isn't the only magic trick up their sleeves. They're about to make AIO hoses disappear. Well, at least sort of. And we're gonna share with you everything you need to know about Lee and Lee's HydraShift AIOs right here, right now on Robitech. Let's go on a journey of imagination together. You've built the cleanest back connect PC that has ever been built. The cables are tucked away from peering eyes, all managed with a precision that would make angels weep. But then you see it, the unsightly droop of AIO hoses and the whole build is ruined. Okay, maybe I'm being dramatic. Okay, maybe I'm being a lot over dramatic, but it seems like the only choices you have if you wanna build using a high powered CPU in your build are either floppy hoses, use a humongous, just bulky tower cooler, or do a custom cooling loop. These are options, but when you've done all the work to make things super clean, you probably wish you could have a CPU cooler that would flow with the aesthetic. Enter the Lee & Lee HydraShift 360, out here solving problems that we didn't think existed until now. And with the new series of AIOs, Lee & Lee aims to minimize visible hosing with some visual magic tricks. Will this mean we have to sacrifice performance to get it? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. But first, let's talk a little bit about pricing and where the HydraShift AIOs land in comparison to other AIOs like it. Now, remember when we said that there were three versions of the AIO? We have the HydraShift 360 TL, the 360R and the 360S. We'll get into the differences in just a minute, but here are the prices. The HydraShift 360S has an MSRP of $179.99, the HydraShift 360R has an MSRP of $199.99, and the HydraShift 360TL has a price of $259.99. At the time of recording this video, the HydraShift was only available in a 360 millimeter version, but each iteration of the HydraShift was available in black or white. So how do prices for the HydraShift AIO compare with other LCD equipped other ones? Well, at the time of this video, Lee and Lee's other LCD equipped AIO, the Galahad or GA2 LCD, retailed for $224.99. Moving outside of Lee and Lee's sphere, the Asus Reagent 3 was $349.99, which is still very pricey. And the IQ Link H150i LCD was $289.99. And the Deep Cool Mystique, well, <laughs> that just can't be bought anymore. So from a price standpoint, the Lee & Lee has plugged the HydraShift AIO into a really interesting price range where there are options around $200, give or take. The price is pretty flexible. What, what about the compatibility? When it comes to CPU supported sockets, HydraShift AIOs target more modern CPUs. So on the AMD side, the HydraShift supports Ryzen CPUs on both AM4 and AM5. Much like the 8th gen Asa Tech pump mounting, Lee & Lee provides bracket to expand their existing AM4, AM5 ones to fit in Intel sizing, making it a very easy installation process. On the Intel side of things, we have support for the LGA 1700 sockets. While that may seem limiting, keep in mind that LGA 1700 encompasses 12th, 13th and 14th generations of Intel core processors, as well as the LGA1851 socket for Intel's next gen desktop CPUs. Now, Intel does go through sockets like some people go through socks, but to be fair here, the socket has been around for three years and Lee & Lee isn't the only company that we've been seeing moving away from supporting older generations of Intel processors. I guess they're trying to tell us that it's okay to let go of those Intel Core Duo and AMD bulldozer chips. Since we're talking about CPU compatibility and installation, we gotta talk about the coolest thing the HydraShift does which we pointed out in the intro. Lee and Lee put the retention bracket on the side of the radiator that, when combined with a 90 degree angle connector and some well-placed clips, basically minimizes hose visibility. It's super clean. These retention brackets can be moved to either side of the radiator, allowing you to move the hose connections to either front or back of the case. Could you front mount a HydraShift AIO? Well, technically yes, but the hose length might be a limitation and you wouldn't get to use that hose hiding feature that makes this AIO so unique. So I would just choose a different AIO. Now, just a quick note here before we move on, anytime you're working with hosing like this, be very careful that you don't kink the hoses. When we were building out the showcase build to really show off hose management, we did have some issues, so it's just something to be very aware of. Now, when it comes to pumps and fans, this is where HydraShift starts to diversify. Since we're gonna focus on the HydraShift 360R in this review, we'll touch briefly on what sets them apart. Starting with the HydraShift 360S, this is your more stealthy performance version. It has a more standard 27 millimeter radiator, fans modeled after Lee & Lee's Performance P28 fans, and an enhanced version of the Galahad 2 Performance AIO pump. The HydraShift 360TL version is the Cadillac of the bunch, or the Ferrari, or Koenigsegg, whichever one you wanna put in there. It has a slightly thicker radiator at 31 millimeters, and a pump running at a more performance speed than the S. 
Where the TL really puts on the Ritz is with the performance meets bling Lee and Lee Uni TL fans. As for the HydraShift 360R, which we're looking at here today, it shares the same radiator thickness and GA2 performance inspired pump as the TL version, but its fans miss no opportunity to add RGB. It's on the fan blades, it's on the sides, it's pretty much everywhere. I mean, it's just, I mean, I can't believe you can even see right now. There's so much RGB just burning into your retinas. These fans push 79.9 CFM at an air pressure of 3.26 mmh duo with an operating noise of around 30 decibels. That's library levels of quiet. As for the display on the pump head, this thing has a 2.88 inch display with a 480 by 480 resolution and a brightness of 500 nits. Thanks to a new update to Lee and Lee's L-Connect 3 software, the LCD has a number of display themes and layouts to showcase system performance, capture content to display on the HydraShift, or be customized with a picture of RobyCat on a private beach if that's your thing. Now the downside here to this whole thing is Lee and Lee's L-Connect software commandeered four to 7% of our CPU's attention at idle, which we've seen from other softwares like Corsair's IQ Link. And let's just say it hasn't been fantastic for performance, but we're gonna have to show you that in our test to tell you that story. And guess what? They do. Keep in mind with all of our IO tests, we test in nearly identical Intel and AMD rigs, which, we're showing you right here on screen all the details. All of this is done under the same conditions to keep the data as clean as possible, same power settings, you name it, it's all about the science. Now with that in mind, let's look at the numbers. At CPU idle, the Lee and Lee HydraShift had an average CPU temperature of 34 degrees Celsius on our Intel platform, while our AMD test bench averaged 46. On both sides of the processor aisle, these temps left our HydraShift at the warmer side of the charts by a factor of three degrees. That's that's not nothing. Now the next 360 millimeter cooler in line were the Asus RG Strix LC3 on the Intel side and the Deepcool Mystique on the AMD side. In our CPU load test, we saw temperature averages of 75 degrees on Intel and 88 degrees on AMD. While the HydraShift was a degree cooler than the LC3 on the AMD side, on Intel, both the HydraShift and the LC3 were at the bottom, but the LC3 was on the cooler side at 75. And the story feels all too familiar during our 1440p gaming test. The HydraShift held averages of 51 degrees Celsius on Intel and 61 degrees on AMD. On both platforms, the HydraShift was a bit sweatier than the rest, with the height thick Q60 being a degree cooler on Intel, while the Deep Cool Mystique was two degrees cooler on AMD. More interesting is when we saw the similar story with the Deep Cool Mystique a few months ago, before they were banned in the US. The software had the system running under a CPU load of eight to 13% at idle. That is going to be really noticeable in your temps, like it was for the HydraShift. And in our gaming benchmarks, that activity from L-Connect 3 really took its toll. Unfortunately, we actually didn't see it bounce back in our CPU load test like we did from the Deep Cool Mystique, which was a bit of a bummer, if I'm gonna be honest. Okay, let's look at the relative value before we get too far into the weeds. In case you've slept at least once since our last CPU cooler video, here is some fancy math. It's CPU thermal max, which is 100 degrees Celsius on Intel, minus the CPU temperature under load, then we divide that number by the retail price. That gives us a dollars per degree of cooling value, which which we can then score and compare. In this case, lower is better. Keep in mind this number is based off of the data we collect from our Intel benchmarks and the most up-to-date prices. These will change obviously over time. With a relative score of eight, the Lee and Lee HydraShift 360R is remarkably average when we look across the landscape of 360 millimeter AIOs. It's not the low, low 4.64 of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Black, but it's not the 10.94 of the Asus Ryujin 3. So with all that in mind, it leaves us with the question of whether or not Lee and Lee's new HydraShift 360R AIO is worth it. And honestly, this is like always gonna be a multifaceted answer because it's never a simple yes or no and so much of it depends on you. Let's talk about installation and overall aesthetic. The HydraShift is a really beautiful AIO that gives builders an opportunity to hide AIO cabling and also the CPU mounting hardware to do it with ease. In showcase PCs like the one we're showing here or in your Lee and Lee 011 cases, this could really make a build that feels super open. Then there's the LCD and the RGB fans for all of those people who are very showcase focused. But if you're someone who's looking for high performance and cooling out of your AIO, then there are options that are gonna get the job done better. Listen, we're not dogging on Lee and Lee here, we just know that they can make some stellar AIOs. And the Gala had two LCD went toe to toe with the Ryujin 3 and put up some great numbers in our Intel tests. But these ones were lacking. Now, that being said, and this is the thing about reviews when we show temperature data, 
Everything that we're doing and showing you is not gonna put your CPU in danger. Remember, we tested it on a 14700K and a 7700X. If you're using your PC for gaming, you could use one of these CPUs or even a 14900K, a 7950X. Understand that AMD is always gonna push the thermal ceiling and, and when you give a 14900K and you set it to Intel stock settings, you're, you're gonna be absolutely fine. You're definitely not gonna cool a 14900KS on this thing, but short of an AIO blessed by the frost giants of Jotunheim, everyone is gonna have a bad time there. Which brings us to kind of our last point. If you're all about needing basically very heavy CPU-based processes to perform at their best, this may not be the most optimal AIO for you. That's not to say you couldn't, but I'm just saying, I don't know if you should. When we looked at the Cinebench scores, the HydraShift's performance was in the middle of your Intel AIOs and at the bottom for AMD. So you might wanna consider a different AIO if you depend on your PC for CPU heavy projects. Hopefully, in the future, we'll be able to test the TL version or maybe even the Performance S version to see how those would improve performance or maybe not. But until we can test those, we really can't give a recommendation on either the S or the TL. But at the end of the day, it all comes down to you. If you love the look of the HydraShift and you want to build an absolutely stunner system, then go for it. But if you have doubts, then the HydraShift would keep your high power PC at lower temperatures and that's what you're all about, then there are definitely better options available to you. But those are our thoughts on Lee & Lee's HydraShift AIO. But we want to know what you think. We're really curious what you think of Lee & Lee's solution when it comes to hose management. Do you like it? Is this a problem you ever thought needed to be solved? Or do you have a strategy from keeping them kind of under control or did you just like the dangling hoses? Let us know all that down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, go ahead and slap that subscribe button, whip that like button and ring the notification bell so that you get a notification each and every time we post a video like this right here at Robitech. And if you, if you have questions or you want to build a system and you want to know what AIO might be best for you or you just want to talk deeper about these subjects, head over to our Discord server, discord.gg slash Robitech. It's an amazing place to talk to other like-minded PC and tech enthusiasts who love to talk about these things. And you know what? You might just make a friend. Also, make sure you follow us on all the social right here at Robitech absolutely everywhere. Thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.